Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Might be wondering why am I holding this pot? Well, today I thought we could do something a little bit different. Every so often we've seen people using like really beautiful decorative pots for their orchids, cacti and succulents. And I figured, what if we simply make our own? Now those boutique pots are like totally awesome, but uh, they cost some awesome money sometimes. This one didn't. <laughs> this was from the Goodwill <laughs> for $3.50. And I do not put any pots in this because I actually do not find this pot attractive. But that's neither here nor there. So what we're going to do today is do some simple painting for our regular clay pots that we're using with our orchids or hoyas and our cacti. If you're interested in learning how to do some simple clay to acrylic artistic painting, keep watching. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our palette of colors. I'm using acrylic paints that you can get at any craft store or even Walmart. And I have my trusty flat brush, another one, a fan brush for fine wispy details, and a detail brush here, which is rather thin, as you can see, for tiny details. Anyway, so here's what we're going to start with. We're going to start with an ombre design on our pots. What is ombre? My hat, <laughs> if you can see it in frame. Going from dark to lighter to light. Now, let's go. I'm going to start first with, I think I'll go with these. Dark green and medium green. We're going to work with that. This is going to be very simple at first, and we'll build on this technique, this ombre colored technique, okay? So we're going to start with our dark green, or any of the darker colors that you decided to start with first. You can decide to put it on the top of the pot, or the bottom of the pot, but we'll be painting in a gradient of colors. So at first you're going to start with your dark color on the top. Okay, so we're going to go one color here, one in the center, one at the bottom. So as you know, you could just go all the way around the top. You don't have to be too tidy. We're just going all the way around, okay? Let's keep going. Hopefully you've gotten your brushes and oh, other supplies you might need is a dishwashing sponge. We're going to actually use that in our painting technique. Okay. And some paper towel. And I will not be using any um, water bowl here at my table because I'll just get up and wash this out in the sink. That's actually the easiest way to go. Keep going until you've got your color all the way around. And at the top, you want to get the rim of the pot for the most part. Don't try and be too tidy. Just do your best. Okay? There we go. So we've gotten that going. That's the dark color. That's our initial color. Make sure it's all smooth. There you go. All the way around. Now we're going to move on to our medium tone. Let me wash my brush one second. We're back with a clean brush and your normal dish sponge. We're going to need that to blend our colors. All right, so I'm going in with a, another shade of green for the center of the pot. Now here's where we're going to do our little ombre effect. Adding that in. Now, <laughs> These colors don't really blend well right now, but you know, keep adding them. 
And here's what I'm going to do. Now I spent a little too much time in my paws and my paint started to dry, but this is what happens the way you get your ombre effect. Right here where the two colors meet, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna do some gentle dabbing. This is pretty much the way women apply their mascara. <laughs> no, did I say mascara? Oh my gosh, the um, blush. Well, well, well. Can you tell I'm a stay-at-home mom and don't put makeup on nearly as much as I need to? Anyway, you're going to blot in between the line of demarcation where the dark color meets the lighter color. And do you see what's happening? Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? Back to the rest. Backstory. I actually shot this entire video earlier today. And when I went to play it back, I realized the entire thing was silent, shot without audio. That was my first time painting clay ever in my life earlier today. So now this is the second time painting clay. I actually really enjoy painting. I consider myself somewhat of an artist, but um, I like doing portraits. I like doing nature scenes, but I've never actually painted on clay surface before. However, I'm finding it's not really different. Got that second color down. Again, we're going to do the same technique. Blending the dark color with the lighter color directly at that line of demarcation where the two colors meet. Now we don't want this getting this drippy. Hello. No sloppy work here. Okay. Take off a little bit of that color off your brush if it's kind of starting to run. So anyway, we're going to blend the colors by blotting just as if you're putting on blush. Keep blotting at that line of demarcation like I said. And it's going to start literally looking like a painting. Isn't that wonderful? Look at that. Now, last color. Not quite a fan of the lightest color that I have right here. I might just let it blend in with the green that's already on my brush. Because it's slightly blue, but that's okay, you know. I'm gonna tap it into my little thing right here. Here we go. A little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did before. Going on the bottom now. Now here is where I shall put this on my surface and spin the surface instead of the actual pot. You can do that as well. Going in, mixing my lightest color now on the bottom. Here we go. So it's the same concept. You're gonna get that light color going all the way around, or shall we say, it's supposed to be lighter than this. You can go a lot lighter with the bottom color if you prefer. Spinning my surface that the pot is on. Again, do not try to be perfect here. Impressionistic painting tends to be, <laughs> Intentionally unintentional, if I can say it like that. Keep going around. You should be liking the effect that you're seeing right now in front of you with your own pot. Yeah? Isn't it looking pretty cool already? Look at that! Who needs those boutique shops? I don't, and neither do you. <laughs> All right, so we're going to blot at the line of demarcation, just as I said before. Okay, a little bit of blotting. This is where this blotting technique here, when you're blending the two of them, uh, don't dig the paint off like I just did, because then you're going to have to patch it up. Okay. Again, none of this is actually a perfect science. In fact, the more untidy it looks, it kind of looks more natural. Do you see that? So we're going to blend right where 
the two colors meet. And never the two shall meet. What line was that in? Some Romeo and Juliet thing? I don't remember. You know, I actually got an A in um, English. Why do I not remember these things? Eh. Anywho. So you keep blotting at your line of demarcation so that there's no actual line of demarcation. Do not blot the paint off, however. That's what I'm trying not to do. Now you see right there that very sharp line? See it? Blot that out. You don't want anything to be very sharp. Doesn't look natural and blended. Yeah. There you go. There are no mistakes, however. Anywhere you don't like the look and it's not quite blended, continue to blot. And it will smooth itself out, as you can see. Right, right there. Look at that. We're pretty much all the way home on this one. So that, my friends, is an ombre artistic impression right here. Stormy night, let's call it that, stormy day. You like that? All right, that's our first one. Now building on this concept of the ombre effect, we're going to do a pot that looks metallic, okay? I'm gonna put this to the side. Get another pot. Pause. And we're back. Clean brush, new paint. We're going to do the metallic looking metal pot look on clay. So you're going to need a metallic acrylic. I'm using silver. I've got some brown to give it a patina finish. Some white, which I may or may not use. And black. So we're going for that rustic Mm, kind of rusted metal look. I did a gold one earlier and we'll put it in the thumbnail. So let's get started. We want to start with the most metallic finish first and it's going to go all over the entire pot. So let's start doing that. Now, <laughs> it would help if I'd actually tested these colors out first. I did not. We are actually winging it here, people. So this is the silver, right? I don't know how that's gonna look on the clay. Well, what do you know, Jetty? It looks great. So, are we gonna keep going? All right, so you're gonna, again, we want this to look like, um, let's call it galvanized. Uh, a galvanized metal tin pot, let's call it that, yeah? All right, so we're going for silver. Now, you do not have to be very neat here because a patina finish tends to be a little, um, th there are imperfections in the way metal looks. So to achieve that, you want to kind of do an untidy brush stroke as if you were a toddler. <laughs> you wanna know what happened today too? I dropped this pot. I had to literally glue it back. Uh -huh. It was one of those days, people. It was one of those days. Now, my kiddos are in bed. But the cats, yeah, the cats, they are afoot. They are running back and forth. So I'm hoping one does not make an appearance right now. So you're going to keep going back and forth on your pot until you've covered the entire surface. All right, I'm gonna pause and finish the rest off camera. Now, I've gotten all the silver painted onto the pot with haphazard brush strokes so it can look metallic, see? All right, but we're not going for the clean metallic look. We're going for the patina finish. So I'm going to go in with some, and now this really sounds like a makeup tutorial, I'm going in with some blush. Anyway, going in with some black that is almost completely finished. My children! And I'm going to start at the top. Now again, this is a concept that 
I have not actually tested. I am simply winging it. But I'm going to put the black at the top of the pot, all the way around. See that? Um, in those relatively untidy strokes, not necessarily as neat as you can. See? Even. Yes. But don't be too obsessed with being precise with the borders that are blending in to the silver. Because remember that technique we used with the ombre effect on the first pot? We're going to do the same thing here again to give this clay metal look a <laughs> uh, rustic finish. So we have that black right there, yeah? The black is all the way there. La, 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 la. Don't do that. that. That was just too much. Yeah, but it will work, okay? You're going to have your brush. Not your brush, your sponge, sorry. And this is where we're going to do the same thing we learned before. With blending in our edges right here. Man, this is sounding like a makeup tutorial. Edges. Are we doing hair here or are we doing a pot? Yeah? Alright. Here we go. I'm spinning my base right here. We're going to go around and we're blending the black in to the silver right here. See? So now we are actually getting exactly what we wanted. A metal look to our pot. with a patina finish, right? Look at that. This is my broken edge from this morning. Keep going around and you're gonna blend your black into your silver. Don't try to be too perfect. In fact, think about it as putting on your blush and blending your makeup. Not a fan of how right there looks. Let's clean that up a little bit. You see? Now, I didn't actually let the silver dry. So if you are too rough, it will rub off. So I'm going to have to fill this in right here with some black. So you got to be gentle if you're not letting the layers dry between your task tasks. Now, for the sake of time, I did not let the silver dry before doing this. What would be best is if you actually let the your metallic paint dry before adding the dark one, okay? But as you can see, it's literally still working out. Blend, 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 blend. Wow, this is looking fantastic. I'm absolutely satisfied with this. Look at that, right? Now at the base, we're gonna go in with a light color. I have a gold and I have a white. I'm gonna do a little blend of gold and white on the bottom, which should give us a nice rustic look on the base. Let's mix the colors. So that's a little bit of gold, a little bit of white. Hang on. Brush clean. Got the brown and the white, a little bit of brown, a little bit of white. And we're gonna make that final base, okay? I'm gonna mix it in. A little bit of brown, a little bit of white. I mean, should look a bit rusty, yeah? We're doing the same thing. I'm going on the very bottom of this pot around the base, okay? just at the very bottom. Spin your pot. All right, so you, again, don't try to be tidy. This bottom part, it's actually essential that it looks a little um, unfinished, untidy at the outset, see? Just dab it on 
like you're kind of frosting a cake, I guess. Spin your thing, spin your base. All right, so now I'm all the way around. I'm gonna, now you're gonna swipe the brush back and forth. Swift strokes like that. Back and forth, back and forth. Quick, quick, quick. So I'm rubbing out that sharp line of de demarcation instead of dabbing it with the sponge. Why? These strokes are lending it a metallic galvanized finish at the base, as you could see. Look at that, folks. Look at that. Tell me that's not a silver metal pot. <laughs> and for fun too. Yeah? Look at that. Wasn't this fun? Right? There you go. This part right here is a little dark. I might just rough it up a bit right there. Yeah. There you go, smooth that out right there, just a little, there you go, with the same brown and white. There we have it. Smooth out any area you don't think looks the way you need it to. Look at that, folks. Your metal pot. Last but not least, you're gonna put your metal pot to dry. Wash your brush. Wash your sponge, return with a clean pot again. Hang on. And I'm back. Now you've got your brush clean and your paintings chosen for this last bit. Clean pot again, using your darkest color that you had because we're gonna tie in all three pots. We're going to finish on a note of whimsy. I'm going to do this entire pot in black. I actually started just so that I could finish quickly and not be talking this much. And we're going to finish with some flowers on the darkest background you have. I'm going to choose white, yellow, green for my leaves. I'll be mixing some yellow and green. And of course, the black acrylic. So you know where we're going with this. We need the entire pot to be black. So you're gonna get your black paint or whatever dark color you chose. Might not be black. And you're gonna continue painting your entire pot, okay? I'm gonna keep going. I'm going to pause and just finish this whole section so my entire pot is black, okay? Now we've got our entire pot painted black. Going to do some whimsical flowers. I'm choosing to do white flowers. You can choose whatever flower, flower color you want. You're gonna need a straight edge to make your whimsical branches. I literally just cut the, the edge of my Swiss Miss chocolate, kind of powdered chocolate box off. And you know, it gives you a sharp edge or you can use the actual art tool to do this. We're first gonna start with our branches. Here's my green color mixed up. So see this? We're gonna rub the edge of it in the paint, like that. Now, I'm going to try and see which technique I like the best to make, oh, wow, to make these branches, okay? Watch. In frame. You see that? We're going for the branches. They're gonna be straight lines. Nothing perfect. Have you seen that? So you keep going. No, <laughs> oh, that was too much right there. Just need the straight lines, Shoshana. All right, there you go. Uh, this is where this will really be whimsical because this is definitely not perfect. So you're dabbing your edge onto your pot. 
Now, the more I stare at this, is the more it looks like. <laughs> yes, some kind of plant. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can see it now. All right. There we go. So you literally just need some random straight lines, okay? No rhyme, no reason. We're just doing straight lines. This is going to tie in the green that I used in the beginning. Okay. Why does this look like... I swear. Anyway, there we go. I'm not doing too much. All right, that's my green branches. Now we're going to go for the whimsical flowers. Dip your sponge into your white paint. Dab it on a piece of paper. I'm gonna test one little area to see if my flower is gonna look the way I want it to look. Yep, it will. See these? Those are literally the flowers. Not gonna take, don't take yourself too seriously here now before you get disappointed. <laughs> okay, all right, there we go. I think I like this look better where they're kind of shaped like the Queen Anne's lace. Look at that. You prefer that? Yeah, let's go with that. Where it's more a uh, um, mushroomy looking top <laughs> to the flower. Abstract. Abstract people. We don't even know what breed of flower this is. It's just blooming in winter. Hello. Okay. Right. So you keep going. Dab your little bits of white on. Could be going for a circular shape. You could be doing what I'm doing where this thing looks more like Queen Anne's lace. But you're dabbing it on. I am not going to go around the pot because this is a simplistic look we're going for. See? Dab, 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 dab. Need a little bit more bright white here. And this is where we're going to go in with a little bit of the yellow, yellowish green onto the tip. Finish off these flowers with some highlights. Flowers have pollen, do they not? So, and put a little bit of yellow on the tops of your flowers. We don't know what type of flower this is, but we do know it has pollen. That is what we know, okay? The butterflies and the bees will like it. I'm gonna continue doing that. So here we go. I continued to dab at my little white flowers until I was satisfied with the final look. They're blowing off into the wind. <laughs> Are they dandelions? Are they baby's breath? Who knows? Not me. <laughs> but there you have it, guys. We did three pots. You should be proud of yourself. See? Started with the ombre. On into your metallic pot. And finishing with a bit of whimsy. Now, if you actually enjoyed this and can ignore my finger near the camera, cheese um <laughs> please leave a like i hope you enjoyed it now what you can do is buy a sealant and spray over the pots because that would actually help this finish 
to be a bit more shiny if you'd like. If you prefer the more rustic look, then do not finish it. The acrylic will be just fine getting wet, um, you know, as you water the plants and everything. Now, I hope you enjoyed this, guys. And, um, hey, thanks for watching. We made our own boutique pots at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys, and hope to see you back here again later. Bye.